Well, hello, I'm Sean from imperfectchess.com and I'm going to show you how I use repertoires uh, using Chessbase 12 or how I use Chessbase 12 to manage my repertoires. This is uh, not the only way to do it, probably not even the best way to do it, but it's how I do it and I thought I'd share. None of this stuff is original to me. I've learned this uh, through the school of hard knocks, not to mention reading a lot of great blogs and of course stuff at uh, chessbase.com so I'm just passing it along. First of all what I like to do is make sure I have a good strong big reference database so when I'm looking and managing the repertoire I know I can see how the world or history views these things so I'm using Mega Database 2014 and I've made sure to check off reference DB down there so it's going to be used. You can see 5.7 uh, million games not bad so there's a good reference database. Now I'm not a very good player and I'm never going to be a really good player so when I do my repertoire I like to have a group of games that relates to people at my level and so for that I've taken a, a, a chunk of mega database and made a subset which I call intermediate this is version 4 of my intermediate you can see it's got almost 280,000 games and it is uh, not a reference database or anything along those lines but it's got um, uh, a fair chunk of games. So now I can compare things between both if I'm looking at some moves. Now when I work on my projects and work on my repertoire I like to do things in chunks usually in like year chunks or uh, eight or ten month chunks anyway at least and I don't like my reference database changing as I'm working. I just don't like it. I like it to be fixed and when I've done a chunk of work then I can update it and be prepared for the next uh, the next amount of work. Having said that I'd like to know if something's going on out there. I don't want to close my eyes to what's going on um, in, in real time. And not that there's a, not that I'm at the caliber player that I need to worry about novelties being played in tournaments around the world, but I like to see it, right? If we play with, with opening repertoires, we like to see what cool things are happening in the repertoires that we're looking at. So what I do is I make sure that any new games coming up, so this is as of January 2014. Right now I'm recording this, it's July 2014. In January 2014, uh, I froze Mega Database. I'm not updating it anymore, and I'm getting my new games into what I'm calling a Mega Recent 26. So it's the Mega Update that will, in theory, go into 2015, and you can see 147,000 games, recent games. Uh, I also have a tree that I set up that matches my reference database, and I can show how. To, if you don't know how to do that, I can show that another time. And I have my final, my repertoire database right now. Uh, I have a bunch of them. This one I call White Playbook ECO, and I'm playing around with a bunch of them. I really need to clean up and, uh, and maybe get down to one. But you can see how I set this up, and you might have seen this elsewhere on the internet. It's it's uh, not new to me, but you use under the column for white. You don't actually have players; you have lines. So under white, you've got um, the open the name of the opening, and under black, I've got the variation of the opening. And under tournament, I have my own taxonomy here. Uh, I like to group things in positions, lines, and then uh, variations within the lines. So uh, all of these uh, first group here are position one, and that comes from a common position, actually comes from this position. This is my position one. So any opening line I have, or variation, that extends from beyond this position, I in tournament uh, under the tournament I call it under position one. And you can see I have officially seven lines. I added an eighth, which I call one point x. It's a little one I stuck in there. I probably could have just called it line eight. It doesn't matter. But the point is, these are the separate lines that cover everything going forward from this position. And then within those lines, I have variations. Let me show you what I mean. If I open this up, I have here. Uh, the d5, knight takes d5, q and f3 variation. So this goes along here. Now, I, if, you go, if you go back, I don't want to close it up, but if you went back, can I do that here? No. If you go back, you can kind of see there's more than one d5 line. So I could have grouped all these together and made them into one line, but there's so many variations and options that I split these up. But you can see this line here, I qe7, I put all the qe7 in this line. And it really is not about making sure that it, everything branches off at the fourth move or the fifth move. Depending on the difficulty or the amount of work involved, you might need to break them into, into subgroups. And I might, in theory, break this line into two or three lines as I do more work. But if I open this back up, um, the defining move in this line is here, the seventh move, QF3. 
3. This is why this is blue. It got blue because I came down and I did a special annotation and I called it a critical opening position. You'll see why that's important later, but right now that's where it is. I only do one critical opening position per line. That's my own rule. You could do more, but um, you'll see why a little bit later why it might get a little funky. So for me, that's this line. If I want another critical opening position later, then I'm going to introduce, make a new line and just carve that part off. So let me give you some examples of how this works. In theory, the, my quote main line for me for this move follows the main line of this pseudo game. And it goes down all the way to here until line 17 where, according to the last evaluation I did, a uh, small advantage for white. In fact, this line has never really had uh, any experience playing because if you come along this way here you can see on the twelfth move there's an N. That means this is a novelty. This line's never been played, at least as far as my databases show it's never been played. I can kind of show that if I go King E7 here and I click reference and it should kick up my reference database. And I'll give it a second and oh, it says no games found. No games found. That's because there are no games with this move going into here. No one's actually even probably gone that far. How far back do I have to go? There, you can see King e6 is the only move on record. Um, actually, that's interesting. King e6 is the only move on record, and I should have a corresponding move here. But instead, we've got King e7, and then uh, a, no a novelty for knight e4. So for some reason, I thought King e7 might be a more um, uh, a common move, probably because I got this novelty from New in Chess 93, Vandertack. Um, a gentleman named Vandertack wrote a an article and explain this whole line. So that's where I have going down here. Uh, but I've never actually gotten this far in a game. Because usually, you know what? The dastardly person playing black has their own ideas. And they end up spinning off and doing different things. Which is why I have these various variations on for each possible case of what black might do and what I might do. And I'm, I'm not building something I'm memorizing. I'm building my own repertoire or encyclopedia for which me to go back and refer to after games on what I should have done and what my move was. So I'm not going to get into how I built all this um, now, although I probably will in another video in the future. But I want to kind of show what happens after it's built. It's not really done because chess is never really done. People keep playing and that can be annoying sometimes, but it can also be cool because you see things um, right in the lines you're working on. Now, it might mean more work for you, but the other way, if you're, if you're into this, if you enjoy this, it's fun to see the types of things people might do. So, an example, this move here, which I got from a gentleman named John Edward, who wrote an article in July 2009, and it was referenced in New and Chess a few other times. He argued that um, castling on the ninth move was a, was a good thing to do, and I, I like his argument, so I decided, okay, that's going to be my main line. That's what I'm going to do. That's really cool. And the number one response to that is c6. So I made that as the next move in my line. As a matter of fact, if you come up to the reference, you can see in the mega database we've had a bunch of games and c6 is uh, clearly far and away the most popular move. Notice this bishop to c5 move which only has three out of the 80 or 90 games. Uh, almost not worth thinking about. But if we go over here and take a look at our intermediate database, intermediate version 4, suddenly we see, okay, well, you know what? When guys my level play, they do do C6, but the C5 is a little more common. 3 out of 20 is a lot more common than 3 out of 90, 80 or 90. So I want to make sure I have the line down there. I have a few extra lines because once in a while I'm playing, I'll go through and play the computer or something and have some extra lines. But for preparing human beings, I need to know I have a C6, and I need to know I have a BC5. And from there I can go on and I can take a look and say, okay, from BC5, um, A3 is uh, for immediate, uh, intermediates, you can see A3 is used. And if I go back up and take a look at the larger database, we can see A3 is used. And there's A3 there. And an alternative B5 would go down there. And just going on from A3 and then two options for black, and we can go and you can see a new novelty there. So this would be a novelty that I probably came up with um, because I wanted to see where things would go if they go this far. I don't think it's ever happened. So we're taking a look at, have we go as far as RF8? So there's one game played in all of the five million or six million. 
where we got this far, and white went QF3 and ended up winning. Uh, and you can see the game here. But I decided QG3 was probably better. What I probably do, I'll just look over here, and if you click on the, the Let's Check, which is another awesome feature of Chess Space, I can see, and you can see uh, this is the engine right now running to see what it thinks. And here you can go and take a look at the library of everyone who has Chess Space and signs up for the cloud. Uh, let's check feature, and you can see right off here, bang, bang, bang. Actually, I think these are all these are all me right now, so I've obviously been playing this area. But 18 depth using Houdini, 18 depth using Houdini, and a piece advantage. So um, QH3 is another option, but QG3, Queen G3, and up here taking a look, and right now QH3 and Q Queen G3 uh, is in second place. And if I go and catch up, that's at 17 depths. If I start to catch up on the depths. Um, the queen g3 will move up. So either way, uh, never been played before, but I've, I've marked that with an N. So if I go down this line and get this far, that would be my move. So that's how that works. But as I said, things keep changing. So what would happen if we take a look at the moves that have happened this year. So I'm going to go back to my 9 in. So this is a, a move I like to follow. It's a, it's a move I've been interested in. I want to see if anyone's played games using this move this year. And you can say, look at this. Three games in 2014 have come to this exact position that I was studying. That's interesting. That's cool. I like that. I want to see whether or not I should be making changes to my repertoire based on any knowledge that came out. You can see these guys. They're, uh, uh, you know, they're not, they're not grandmasters. These are guys at my level. Nobody's perfect. But these are guys at my level, and it's right in my wheelhouse, and I want to see what they've got. So right away I can see, okay, here's a C6 move, right? I was looking for that. That's the main line. Um, and there's an A3 response. And you know what? S uh, when you get to C6, I like the D4 response. And you can probably go over here and take a quick look. I'm not going to try to reevaluate everything. I've taken a look at this a lot. And I've already made my decision that D4 is what I want to do. And you can see there's three different people who have already done this research. And they like D4. And D4 is showing up. So I'm okay with D4. So, all right, this guy played this game. Oh, I'm going to go back to my here. This guy played this game. And he uh, went to A3. He made a different move. He ended up winning, which is fine. But nothing for me there because I want to keep it to one move for white. This is a white repertoire that I'm working on, so I don't want multiple moves for me to get me confused. I've got one move, and so for C6, it's D4, not A3. We talked about BC5. Take a look. Here's another BC5 situation, and white responded with A3, and remember, BC5, a little more common. Here's a, yet another game where a someone at my level chose BC5 instead of C6, and my plan was, in fact, A3. All right, well, that's cool, and after A3, RF8. We were just looking at that. RF8 is where I want to go. Then my idea is my novelty for Queen G3, and these guys went QE2. So not necessarily um, a bad move. They ended up winning the game. Uh, but I'm not going to change yet. I'm going to keep my plan of um, uh, keeping with the novelty that I had put down, which was, um, I lost my place now, but here it is, RF8, and then Queen G3. Okay. So two of the three games, uh, interesting, but not going to change my repertoire because of what they've got. So let me come down one more time. And this is interesting. QF6. So we've got an unrated player, 1,400 playing an unrated player. He's gone this far down a not terrible line um, at this point. And suddenly, after 9, he goes, that's an interesting queen, you know. I don't see that, and I don't have that. I've got b6, I've got bc5, I've got b5, but to move the queen down, f6, that's a whole new thing. Now, I don't have time to analyze this right now, but someone's done this, and it's happened, and I should kind of know how to respond to that, just in case I'm playing you know, buddy of mine who's not rated and goes to try to do something like that. But I don't really have time to study it right now, but I don't want to forget it. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to right-click here, and I say, copy this to the notation. And all of a sudden, in my repertoire, somewhere down here, I should see 
queen f6, and there it is, queen f6, and it's got the whole game in there, and it shows me right to the end. Now, this isn't blessed by me yet. I can see the white won, but I don't know if those are the right moves. Maybe there's something I can improve on, or maybe I want to follow. I don't know. But this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do right-click here, and I'm going to go get set a medal on this. And for the medal, I'm going to call this uh, a novelty. I'm not putting an end down for a novelty. I'm putting this down for um, to get this. And what this blue mark means is, hey, I've seen something new, and I haven't analyzed it yet. I need to go back and look at this. But for now, we're going to put this in there. And then I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to file, and I'm going to save. I'm going to place that so I don't lose it. And if I'm going to close this up, uh, I don't have my medals here. I need to go over and show medals. Boom. There's a medal. And so I know, looking, hey, this line has a new feature. A new, someone made a game, someone played a game this year, and black made a move that, that wasn't in my repertoire, and I need to go back and look at that. When I go back and do the analysis, I'll take the metal back off. I don't keep the metals on and just keep populating them along there. They're just sort of notes for me to make sure that there's something I do when I feel like um, working on my openings. So there you go. This is a, a small piece of how I do it. Going forward, I think what I'll do is make some videos on how I got here, starting from scratch, and how you might want to build a repertoire yourself using Chessbase. Um, that's all for now. Uh, thanks a lot for listening, and if you got a moment, drop by my website, imperfectchess.com, where I've got some finished product you might be interested in. Cheers. Have a great day.